Welcome back, guys. So today, I wanted to show you a new theme from Dwayne Hurst for Emulation Station within RetroPie. Pretty cool theme. I also want to show you how you can install it properly. A couple tweaks you may need to make within the system to get this to work properly for you. And also cover the features of this theme and kind of showcase what's contained within it and how things work. So let's go ahead and begin and show you how to install it. So first off, we're gonna to wanna to go to RetroPie configuration, and then we're gonna to go to the RetroPie setup. Now, once in RetroPie setup, you're gonna to wanna to update the setup script. The new version is gonna be 4.2.18, so if you're not already on that, you're gonna go ahead and update. If you're kinda of behind, in your updates, you're going to want to go ahead and after updating your setup script, you may want to go to manage packages and manage, go to manage core packages, install update core packages from binary. This should only take a minute or two and you should be good to go. When you update core packages, it's only updating RetroArch, Emulation Station, the RetroPy menu, and the run command. So none of your emulators or anything else will be touched. Now, once that is all done, the next thing you're going to want to do is press start once you're back into emulation station and go down to other settings. I've changed my VRAM limit to 120 megabytes. This came as a recommendation from David Marty in order to get this theme to, to work properly. It's the setting that he's using, and he also changed one other configuration that we're going to take a look at next. Now this has worked for me for this theme. I cannot guarantee you that it will work for other themes if you're having an issue, but having the VRAM set to 120 megabytes and then doing the next step, I have not had much of an issue. So go ahead and change that there. And then next step, you're gonna go to Raspy Config. Now once in Raspy Config, you're gonna to, gonna to wanna to go down the advanced options. Go ahead and hit select, and then go down to your memory split. That's gonna change the amount of memory that's dedicated to the GPU. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. Now, your default will most likely be 256, but what was recommended from David Marty was that he has his set to 512, and this works out for him. So I have also set mine to 512, and I have not had much of an issue. So once that's done, go ahead and get out of there. and. If you're just freshly doing this, it will ask you to reboot your system. So go ahead and, and reboot now. And then of note, once you update your core packages again, this option will set back to the default. So you may need to change it again. It's happened to me, I confirm, once I have updated the core packages, this goes back to the default of 256. So if you update, you may wanna check back and fix it again. So it's asking me to reboot, but I've already done all these steps, so I'm not gonna reboot. Now to go ahead and take a quick look at this bad boy. So this theme, you have the, the horizontal scrolling of our icons there for the system select. Pretty nifty. Now you have a few options as well as far as transitions go. So transition style, I have mine set to slide. Typically I like to use instant on a lot of these themes. Every theme is gonna be different as far as how she performs and looks with the transition style. It's all gonna be up to your taste. But I'll go ahead and show you how they all three look. Like I said, I prefer slide, but normally I use instant. So let's go ahead and take a look at instant. Boom. Instant's just gonna be your background's gonna instantly change when you scroll the display wheel. And that looks fine too. Now the next one, fade. is simply going to have the background fade in and out every time you change. So boom, just fades to black and then the new image comes up. So like I said, I, I prefer slides, so that is what I'm gonna leave it at. And this theme also does support video snaps if you have your video snaps set up properly. with all your information set up on the side there. If everything's scraped properly, 
you'll have a, a display pretty similar to the way this looks. All your game information, your icon there, and your video snap playing. So that's pretty nifty. Definitely dig the way this looks. Each system you select, you're going to have that wheel display on the inside of the system when you're selecting your games. So that, that looks pretty cool. Everything's kind of matches up and, and looks nice. So the other thing with this theme is she does have your all games, favorites, and last played, which is pretty cool. It's kind of a standard nowadays for any of the newer themes coming out. And these guys who are really big into the game of making themes, they know what's up, so they make sure we have those features. The other thing we have is within our game collection setting, we do have our custom collections, so that is nice. This theme does fully support that, and we'll go ahead, before ending this video, we'll take a look at what themes are already created within this setup for you to choose from. So just scrolling down this list, we have Batman, Capcom, Castlevania, a lot of the standards, you know, Disney, Donkey Kong, Final Fantasy, Frogger, all that good stuff. Some companies, some, you know, game types as far as characters go. So a lot of cool stuff that you can set up and then make your own little collections for. But you can also remember that you can make your own collection and it'll go into its, its a folder within the collections setup. So if you set that up, you'll have a wheel with the collections, open it up and you'll have your folders for all of the collections that you have created that are not already integrated into this theme. So let's go ahead and why not select Street Fighter. So we're going ahead and selecting Street Fighter. She just loaded up kind of kind of glitched out a little bit but that's fine so that's going to be your icon and since we're in editing mode we can go ahead and search for our street fighter games so we can just go to all games make it real easy instead of going through all the systems and then just scroll down find street fighter Bam, and go ahead and hit Y, add Street Fighter. This image doesn't have a lot of games on it, so that's why I only have one Street Fighter on there. And then we go back over there to our Street Fighter collection, and, and there we go. Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition for the Mega Drive is within our collection now. And then we'll go ahead and finish editing Street Fighter Collection by pressing select and then going down to this on the options. And then we're done. We're done editing. So it's cool that we have all that. I think that's pretty nifty that there's quite a big selection of custom themes already integrated. So as you see, I'm just scrolling back through them again. Pretty cool stuff. Shoot 'em up, Spider Man, Star Wars, Williams. So you have some companies, some characters. So game series and whatnot. I'm really digging this theme. I, I, I think it's pretty clean. Yes, we have some of those little glitches going on. But once you, re once you do those settings changes that I just showed you a moment ago, you're pretty much good. There's going to be not much of an issue. I have an experience. Just when I create a collection, it kind of like slows down for a moment. But then once it's done going into editing mode, the theme just functions perfectly again for me. So not much of an issue there. But I hope you guys appreciated taking a look at this. Smash that like button if you could. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Go jump on over to Dwayne Hurst's channel as well. I'll have that linked in the description. Go smash some likes on him as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. And there you go. Appreciate it, guys. I will catch you all next time. Boom. Boom.